Robocop 2. This is a good one. Mostly. Kinda. They did the best they could to recreate what Verhoeven had created the first movie. But a lot of the time they just fell flat. I'm having trouble. But let's start with the good. Peter Weller returns to play Robocop. He did a fantastic job in the first one and he does a great job in this one. Peter Weller really gives it his all and it's it's such a bummer that he never came back to play Robocop again. Robocop's suit looks amazing in this one. I brought up how the rubber and plastic pieces bothered me from the first movie. Well, they really improved it for this one. All the metal pieces, they look so much shinier and the, all the flexible portions of the suit, they were hidden a lot better. And it's just an overall better looking suit. The graphic nature of the first Robocop, it wasn't really matched here. I mean, it's hard to get as gruesome as the original. But they did a decent job. And what they fell short of graphically, they made up for with the overall tone. Robocop 2 is so much darker than the original. Like using a baby as a hostage. Or like having the right hand man of the crime lord being a kid. Can't shoot a kid, can you? A lot of people find this like tactless or inappropriate. But I appreciate this movie for just having the balls to make these types of decisions. Now, does the idea of a kid being the brains behind a criminal organization hold any water? Hell no. But was it cool seeing a kid like this back when I was a kid? You look a little out of breath, bitch. Hell yeah. So I'm not sure if it's just nostalgia talking here, but I always liked the idea of having a kid involved with the bad guys. I actually liked the commercials in this movie a lot better than the first. The original had that Nukem game. Nukem. Get them before they get you. And that 6000 SUX commercial. Those were really good. But this one has Magnavolt. And it won't even run down your battery. Magnavolt. And Sunblock 5000. Just apply a pint to your body and you're good for hours. I look forward to these commercials every time I watch this movie. I really like the opening sequence. The camera follows one person after another from like an old woman to a man who takes her purse to the women who beat him up and finally to a group of guys who break into a gun shop. This really sets up the crime-ridden city well. How just about everyone you see is a criminal. And I love how the camera kind of flows through the streets following different characters until they finally settle on the robbers. It's really similar to the camera work in the first one. The only problem is, this is the only scene that does anything like this. And that brings me to what I didn't like about this movie. The camera work. The cinematography is so static and bland throughout the rest of the movie. Other than the opening shot, most of the non-action sequences are just so boring. I talked about how engaging the first Robocop was with all the corporate office scenes, the camera movement especially. But in Robocop 2, we get lots of really long scenes where the camera just doesn't really move. I'd advise you to say nothing further. It might be actionable. It's bullshit! And it makes for such cookie cutter scenes that end up being so forgettable. So it's really hard for me to follow along with the little OCP subplots going on. I think it's worse than that, sir. We shifted 80% of our liquid resources to the urban pacification plan. If we can't do those, well, with confidence in OCP. And speaking of subplots, just like the first movie, this one has a lot of corporate side stories going on behind the scenes, but I didn't think any of them really panned out very well. They didn't seem to directly relate to Robocop or the main plot. For instance, the mayor of Detroit is fighting with OCP for funding, and when he gets desperate, he ends up going to the drug lords to try to secure the money himself. Tell you what, put me down for 50 just to make sure. <laughs> 50 cents, 50 dollars. Thank you. OCP finds out what he's up to, and they send in Kane to take everybody out. What the hell? So pretty much this serves as an excuse to show off Kane, but it didn't really do anything else for the plot. Also, there's that woman who seduces the OCP president and convinces him to let her create a new Robocop using Kane, the drug lord. Go to it. Report to me directly. Yes, sir. You could learn a thing or two from that girl, Johnson. Because... You know what? To tell you the truth, I have no idea what her motives are. 
Why does she do this? Also, after Kane and his gang cuts Robocop into a bunch of pieces, she puts them back together and uploads a bunch of directives that forces them to be super nice. Good morning! Now, honestly, this makes for a lot of funny moments. Thank you for not smoking. But why does she do this? It doesn't make any sense, and it feels so isolated from the rest of the movie. It just doesn't really flow. I feel like they left something out. Like, was she actually trying to help Kane and his gang? If so, why? Was she related to him? Or was there some sort of love interest there? That might have explained a few things, but the movie never says. And my final complaint is the fact that all of Alex Murphy's growth from the first movie is kind of irrelevant in this one. He goes through all the first movie to remember who he was and where he came from, but in number two, his voice and movements are all robotic all over again, so it feels like we're just starting from square one. Where is Kane? I mean, we do get a moment where he tracks down his wife and spies on her, which I thought was pretty interesting. You know, maybe we can explore how he's struggling with his feelings about his wife. But that whole subplot just ends when he tells her to go away. Your husband is dead. I don't know you. It just doesn't make any sense. And that's kind of Robocop 2 in a nutshell. There's a lot of good scenes and moments, and I love watching this movie because of them, but if you slow down to think about it for too long, that's where it might lose you. Many of the ideas brought up throughout the movie don't really go anywhere, and they end up leaving me feeling unsatisfied by the end. Is this a great sequel? No. Is it good? Yeah. I like it a lot. If you like the first Robocop, I think this one's worth your time. Thanks for watching everyone, my name's Kenny, and until next time, let's not just watch movies, let's talk about them too.